take it on. Yes. Our Father in heaven, you are holy. Your kingdom and will be done in us. Today, meet our deepest needs. Forgive us to the same measure of our forgiveness. Save us from the worst of ourselves and the evil one. Amen. Now I should be on, okay? Brilliant, perfect. Welcome to Cologne Kirk. It's lovely to be with you all this morning. Now before we get started, I know there's lots of confused people who are wondering why they've got, had one of these handed out to them this morning. Does anybody not have one? Alison, right up the back, not got one? Okay. Brilliant. If you are a younger person or you would prefer coloring to writing, do you have a coloring sheet version? You guys, do you have coloring? And would you like coloring? You're all right? Okay, well if you change your mind, there are coloring sheets up the back and there's pens and toys and activities over there as well. A couple of other notices before we get started. Next week is our harvest service, so we are asking people to bring donations of food for Startup Sterling, so we have a list on Facebook and I think it was up on the notices of the, at the beginning of the types of tinned food and other non-perishables that Startup Sterling are really in the need of at the moment and would help the most number of people. So if you're able to check that out, and anything would be gratefully received. The church will be open before and after the service as well to receive it. There will also be a soup lunch after the service, and Teresa is organizing that. We're also looking for volunteers to help make soup and bread and just help generally help out. So if you're willing to be one of those volunteers, then Teresa is the person to speak to. We have several opportunities to share in prayer in the church. We always have a short time of prayer at 9.45 before this service. And usually we have a 10 a.m. prayer group on Wednesday morning. That's not meeting this week. So if you would like to join us, just wait until the next week. And that will be through in the session house. And as we always say, if there's anybody who would like prayer or feels like they need prayer for themselves or others, either please come and talk to one of us at the end of the service and we'd be happy to talk to you and to pray with you. And there is also prayer request forms at the, back, at the front of the church that you can fill in. There is a short service today at... Abbey Field, or what was Abbey Field, but at, at, at that home. So if you would like to join in that service, then all are welcome. And I think that's all the notices. Anyone else want to shout? No, brilliant. Well, let's draw near to God. Let's still our hearts and think about why we are all here and why we have all come through these doors this morning. And if you're sitting and watching us online, then we, draw, we would invite you to draw close to God as well as we, draw, as we come and pray. Let's pray. I'm just distracted because this isn't working. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord God, loving and heavenly Father, this morning, this moment, we find stillness, we find silence, and in it, we are drawn to you. In it, we lift our eyes in prayer to our God who is holy to our God who is our shelter and our refuge. 
to our God from whom we come out of whatever troubles we've faced, out of whatever thoughts and busyness we have found in our heads this morning. We come to you, take our eyes off everything else and fix them solely on you, our creator, our maker, the God who knows us beyond and deeper than anyone else. Father, you have known us before we were even born. You knit us together. You created us. You knew that we would be born at this time and in this place. You knew that we would struggle, that we would need you, your love. You knew that you would send your son. And we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for a man and God who walked alongside us, who walked across this earth, who died and rose again to forgive us from our sins. And Lord, we ask forgiveness for those times where we have let our eyes wander, where we have become distracted. And we thank you for the loving arms with which you welcome us back. Lord, your Holy Spirit sweeps over us. It fills us as we draw near to you today. You guide us and comfort us, showing us the right ways to be. We, give, we dedicate our offerings, the money that has been given, the time that people have offered today, all of it for your service, for your work so that your kingdom may come. And all of our prayers we offer today, in the name of Jesus, your Son. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is Jesus Calls Us Here to Meet Him. Thank you for moving the PowerPoint slide on. Let's stand and sing.
I think it's working for now. We'll see how it goes. If you have been here or watched any of the services over the last few weeks, you will know that we have been picking apart and teasing out the meaning and the different messages that we can pray using the Lord's Prayer. To really spend a bit of time looking at the details of it and see if there are ways, if it says what we think it does or if there are new or deeper aspects to it. We mentioned right back at the beginning that Jesus gave these words to his disciples because they asked him to teach them how to pray. So this morning, I'm hoping we can try and put some of what we've learned into practice. If we can use the framework to think about different ways that we could pray. We know there's lots of different examples of prayer in the Bible. But this is one that Jesus gave us. So it seems like a good foundation to start with. As we checked... Everybody has a copy of the Lord's Prayer in front of them, or they're hiding because they don't want to admit they don't. If you're watching at home and you'd like to join in with this, would you just pause the video, go and grab yourself a pen and a bit of paper, and then just restart once you're ready. So this version of the Lord's Prayer, this translation that you have on your sheets, this is the one that we've been referring to throughout the series. I'm going to give us all a few minutes, and I would like you to think about what you feel the need to talk to God about today. Use the printed words as headings. Scribble down anything you like that personalizes the prayer, whether it is your hope that God's will be done in your life or a cry for him to meet your deepest needs. Now, I know that this might feel a bit uncomfortable and it's a bit new. If you can't write, if you'd prefer to draw or to scribble, that's fine. Just remember that the only people who will know what you've put down on that bit of paper are you and God. I'm not going to ask for feedback from anyone. I'm not going to ask anybody to shout out what they've prayed. This is just a time of reflection and a personal time of prayer for you and God to have a conversation. When the time is up, and I say, as I say, well, I'll only just give you a few minutes, I'll come back to the front and we will pray together. Everybody happy with what they're doing? Brilliant. Let's pray.
Lord, what an amazing God you are. Just as you have made each of us unique and with free will to think whatever we want, so you hear all of our prayers, unique and different though they are. We put them all together and we raise them to you, knowing that your answers will come in your time and in your way. Open our hearts and make us ready to hear your voice. Thank you for the gift of prayer. Amen. We sing again our second hymn for today, May the Mind of Christ My Saviour. I'll just talk louder. There we are. The reading this morning is taken from the chat of the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 11, starting at verse 1 to verse 10. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be, I your, be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because... A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. Then the only one on his side answers, Don't bother me. The door's already locked and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him the bread because he is his friend, yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will give, be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. 
and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Amen. Our next hymn is, it really is a new hymn. It was only written in 2020. It's called Thy Kingdom Come, and it is new words, but you will know the tune. So let's stand and sing. I wonder which version of the Lord's Prayer feels most familiar to you. Which one did you grow up saying? There might be some people here who don't know any version, who don't know it at all. We come with a mismatch of different backgrounds and experiences. They show up in all kinds of ways. This is just one. up until now in the series and we've been looking at the Lord's Prayer for four or five weeks now we've been using the Lord's Prayer as it's recorded in Matthew this week instead as Elizabeth so wonderfully read we are using Luke's gospel although both both writers might have been recording the same event Most believe that this was a prayer that Jesus taught and repeated many times throughout his ministry. Okay, a beep. (laughs) 
So he probably repeated it to different groups, perhaps answering different questions regarding how we pray. But the variation is notable. We notice the bits that are missing, as well as what words have been chosen for inclusion, especially when they differ from our expectations of what should be there. We can use this to explore and dig deeper. So, what is missing? From both of the Gospels and the translations we've used, did anyone notice any parts that were missing? Yes, you do all have a bit of paper, so you can check. Is that where you would expect the Lord's Prayer to end? For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever, or forever and ever. Amen. This is what we are used to saying, those of us who are used to saying the Lord's Prayer, might expect to find at the end of the Lord's Prayer. And yet neither translation and neither gospel that we've used has had this included. You might find that some biblical translations will include this in Matthew. Others will not, or it's there but only as a footnote. Its inclusion, and so its use, varies by tradition. You may also have gone to churches in other denominations and other traditions where this is not included, but we do include it. And that's because at one point, and in some Bibles, it was included but it has mostly been accepted as a much later inclusion in the Bible than when the rest of the Bible was written, probably several hundred years later, and therefore most people have chosen to remove it. However, it has been common to add this type of what we call a doxology, this type of ending to a prayer throughout Jewish and Christian tradition, And so there's nothing contradictory in including it in our worship. We merely recognize it as an addition. So this is one very obvious way that the Lord's Prayer can and has been adapted. It has been used as a framework for Christians and the church to build upon. And there's lots of others. In our first thoughts, our reflection time a few minutes ago, we had a chance to use it this way. We used it to create our own personal prayer. Now this might be something that you've done before in your own private prayer time. I know I have, and it's been teaching on the Lord's Prayer in series like the one that we've just had in the last few weeks that has helped me to do that, has helped me to make those additions that are to do with what's going on in my own life. So I hope that you will be able to take what you've written home today, that you'll be able to continue to pray through it in your own time, and that this might be a practice that is helpful for you, and if it is, that it's another way that you could include in your prayer life Just writing down, using a prayer or a psalm, and adding to it to help in your conversations with God. The other way. So that's how it can be used for our personal prayer. However, when we examine the words, as we have been doing, it's very clear that this is a corporate prayer. It's a prayer that we say to our Father. When we say the words together, and we will later in the service, we are joining our voices in collective prayer. In acknowledging this, the dialogue has expanded. It's no longer a a one-to-one But although there's more people involved, it is still an intimate, 
personal conversation between God and a gathered group of his beloved children, which is what we are here. If we realize this, we can recognize that, there are e- that for each of us, there are things that we would like to say or to hear. Remember, prayer is never a one-way street. This prayer is like the most important group chat you will ever be part of. And if you don't know what a group chat is, <laughs> it's a social media term for when you send a text and a whole group of people can see the replies and then you can reply and everybody else in the group will see you. So everybody is included as part of the conversation. What group are we part of? Well, gathered here today, we gather as a congregation here in Cologne. So, what would a Cologne Kirk Lord's prayer look like? I would ask you to shout out, but I think you've already done enough work for today. But what I'll do is I'll give you some of my thoughts, and hopefully this helps us all to reflect. And feel free and come and tell me if you think that something else should have been in there or that I've missed something out. I think if we were going to do it properly, and it really was to be for everybody, we'd need to form a committee. And then then we'd be looking at a few years before we got any sort of answer. And I don't think you will want to stay here that long this morning. So let's give it a go. So we began with this. Our Father in heaven, you are holy. How do we react or how do we use this as Cologne? Well, I think we start from a place of looking up. A sincere prayer. We acknowledge who it is that we are here for. And if we're not here for him, why are we here? Who else could we be here for? We are together on a journey to get to know and understand our God more. What we have learned some over many, many years is that we are his children. He is our parent, our heavenly father. And so that is where we start. We put ourselves on the sure foundation of this phrase. So if we go wandering off a bit later, which we probably will do, especially if we're doing a committee, that we will be brought back by meeting together to talk and learn and pray. We also want to praise God for all that we believe about him his holiness, his place above all others, and the only one who can be a focus for our church. We make these assertions before we say anything else. Nothing should get in the way of proclaiming as Cologne that God is holy. Your kingdom and will be done in us, in us as a church. Let this church, us together, be the place from which revival springs. That is our prayer. As we seek to be his church here in Cologne, we want this place, this village, not just this building, this whole village, this whole area, to be transformed by him. For it to be a place that is so God-centered that everything his world should be like, that is what happens here. That is his kingdom coming. The places that don't know him, that seem barren and a long way from faith, apathetic and uninterested. Our prayer is that they start to burst with new life and a hunger to walk with Jesus. And though we have such longings for Cologne, most of all we pray that God's will be done. We don't know the best ways or the best times for these things to happen. We wish we did, and sometimes we probably think we do, but we don't know. God sees the bigger picture. We commit in prayer to stopping our own things and looking to his instead. Let's be honest, we all have questions about what God's will is. 
if we are getting it right as we seek to follow faithfully. Good thing we don't need to know. We just have to pray, your will be done. Today, meet our deepest needs. When we spoke about this earlier in the series, we spoke about how it was fo- the focus was utter dependence on God. We might ask each other what the church needs most. New families, a few more children, change of building layout. We always say that the church is not the building. And I suggest that this the part of this prayer could be sincerely praying for the needs of the people of this part of Christ's body. Our deepest needs. The deepest spiritual, mental, physical needs of the person sat next to you. Or behind you. Or in front of you. Knowing that we may never know exactly what those needs are. Which of their cupboards are empty. But God does, and his heart is for them, for us. We are simply moving into step, tuning ourselves to the same key. Forgive us for the same measure of our forgiveness. It's tricky, praying for the forgiveness of us as a church, More than personal forgiveness. Forgive me and the person sat next to me. To the same measure as my forgiveness. Are there things that we as a church are collectively holding on to? Forgiveness is hard. And forgiveness as a church automatically sounds like a political statement. But just as we pray for the needs of others, surely we can pray for collective forgiveness as well. There is a great power in asking that no wrongdoing be held against another person. And it also gives us an opportunity to examine ourselves as a body. Maybe there are situations that we could have handled better as a church. People that have been hurt. Do we ever join together to say sorry? Maybe that's something that we should include in our prayers as we pray together. Save us from the worst of ourselves and the evil one. Many of you have spent a long time in the church and I'm sure can name things that have happened, personal experiences you've had, experiences you've heard about from others where people in the church have not been loving have not been kind have not been seeking to do God's will where that temptation to have another focus to see another power has overwhelmed the church and the destruction and the hurt that that has caused so by praying that we save to, for God to save us from the worst of ourselves and the evil one. We are asking that he will make this church and all churches a place that cannot be touched by evil, a place where bad decisions do not take away from God's will, but people, and we are all people, merely people, who struggle and get things wrong, that we would not be the focus, as we've been saying the whole way through the service, that we would turn our eyes only to God. And I think that that's the the danger of church, is that we bring ourselves broken and vulnerable as we are, and sometimes it's the worst of us that comes out. And so by praying to be saved as a church from that, We are not saying that no one can come broken, but we are saying that even in our brokenness, we will be redeemed through God. That seems like a wonderful and safe place to be. These are quite 
grave prayers, some of them, to consider saying as a church. Probably maybe more so than we'd be comfortable with, especially if we went into them even deeper. They are more planned, more thought out, and some really big themes have come up. And I hope that is the point. It's the things that might distance us from Jesus, that it is essential that we pray about together. It's not a negative prayer. It's not a prayer about beating ourselves down. Jesus says, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. He is giving disciples permission to be confident in their prayers. By praying in this way, we have laid down the difficult parts, the barriers. It's one of those times where following rules or following this layout that Jesus gives us actually gives us more freedom, freedom to explore tricky things. And there's safety in using it because we know it has been given to us by Jesus. Safety to explore what these different words and phrases mean. Each time we pray them to understand them a little more, to connect a little deeper. Hopefully this series has allowed us all to do that. And they are recorded if you want to go back, if you've missed any and you need to go back and see what a particular bit means. Or in a few months' time you're praying you think, oh, I'd like to see what Stuart said about one of those things. Then all of his sermons are recorded from the last few weeks. These are thoughts and prayers that we can take with us, that we can build and build upon over years. And that safety means that when we come to pray, we know that we are wrapped in God's love. Whether your prayers are personal today, or whether they are for and with us as a church, or maybe you've thought of a different way to use these words to pray. Some things do not change no matter how we do it. We pray them to our Father, using the words gifted and given by the Son. We pray them guided by the Holy Spirit, embraced and held by the Trinity as God welcomes us in, safe to pray pray, and safe to bring our prayers. So let's do that now. Let's pray. Loving God, we bring our prayers whether they are said in the silence of our own mind, whether they are lifted as cries or as hymns or as prayers in ancient or new buildings or out in your creation, whether they are said by old or by young, no matter the race or the country, no matter who says them, that when prayers are given and prayed earnestly to you, that you hear that you enter into conversation with us. We thank you for the joy that speaking to you through prayer brings. We thank you for Jesus Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. There are so many beautiful prayers and ways to pray through words, images, music. This next hymn, Beauty for brokenness says in the first verse, this is our prayer. And so as we turn our thoughts and our prayers to those in need around us, let us sing this hymn, Beauty for Brokenness.
when we do our prayers for others, we usually say the Lord's Prayer at the end. And we're going to this time. Often the person leading the prayers takes a step back so we can quietly say our preferred version. Can I ask this time, when we get to that part, that we say it aloud, a bit louder than you would, so that the people around you can hear. Still say what you're used to. It's okay to end at different times. It's okay if you're not saying the same thing as the person next to you. But I think it's important for us to recognize that we don't speak the words alone. And we can do that by hearing each other. So we'll have our prayers of intercession and we'll have a few times of quiet through that so we can join the personal and the collective prayers together. And then we'll end by saying the Lord's Prayer boldly and confidently together at the end. Let's pray. Oh, holy God, so many prayers in so many different ways, just a fraction of which we have touched and spoken on this morning, but all over the world, Lord, there are those lifting prayers to you, cries because they feel so helpless cries because they cannot see where you are at work. Lord, there are so many situations and so many countries where unrest seems to be the in order, where peace and comfort and conversation seem to fade away. But Lord, we know you are not the God of the first but rather father of all and the one who does bring peace and comfort. In our first moment of pause, we remember the places across the world where people are rising up or fighting or dealing with disruption. We think of Ukraine. We think of those protesting in Iran. We think of those dealing with weather in Canada. All these and so many more we bring before you now in a moment of our own prayer. Creator God, this world is yours. And we know that it is not your will for these, this chaos to reign forever, that your kingdom and will will be done. And so while we are in the midst of trials here at the moment, we pray that your kingdom would hurry, would be built, and we pray for the part that we have to do in that. We pray too for our own country, and decisions being made that seem to benefit only a tiny number in our society, a tiny number when so many more are struggling, so many more living in fear of what is to come, feeling themselves being squeezed tighter and tighter, seeing the money drain away and not knowing where the next meal is coming from for them or their children. Lord, we know, we have read in your scriptures so many times that you have a heart for justice, that, uh, it, that you ask that injustice should be called out at any, every turn. And so when we see it, and when you direct us to it, Lord, give us the confidence to speak to stand up and say, this is not right. This is not God's will. God's will is that all the hungry should be fed, that all should be clothed, that all should be brought in and looked after. We can only do our small part 
but we pray that that small part may be in the ways in the service that you are calling us individually to. So let us know when that moment has come to speak. Even in our own village, here in Cologne, we know that, these, that people are facing troubles, that people are facing uncertainty and fear. And so when it comes and when they feel it, drive out that fear, Lord. Drive it out so that only peace remains. And when we talked earlier about your will being done in Cologne, that we come with open eyes and open hearts, ready to do the work alongside you, ready to be your people here, making a difference, building your kingdom. And for those we don't know or for those we do, for those who are struggling, grieving, unwell, concerned about bills or food. Lord, we pause again and bring our own prayers to you. As service draws towards its close. But Lord, you do not leave us behind. You are ready always to hear our prayers. Always to speak to us, if only we might stop and listen. And as we have prayed to, today, personal prayers in the silence, we have also lifted up our prayers that we pray together to you. And we do that now in the words that Jesus taught us, in the words of the Lord's Prayer as we all know it, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The glory is God's. And we'll sing that now as we stand for our final hymn, To God Be the Glory.
great things our God has done indeed. As we go from this place, we go knowing that we have a God in whom we can turn to in prayer at any time, who hears us, who speaks to us, who is alive and reigning today. So go in the knowledge that you are known and loved by God now and always. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us wherever we go.